On this week's episode of In An Instant, we're talking all about expired film. And that is why we're here at an expired movie theater to take some shots. We'll show you some of this stuff later on in the episode, but first, let's roll that intro. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and on today's breakdown, we're talking all about expired Polaroid film. Whether you should try it, what to look out for, what it all means, how did I get here, this is definitely not where I parked my car, can't remember where I was going, where I came from. Are, are, are we liking this bit? Let's just move on, all right, let's do it. So if you've been shooting film in the modern era of Polaroid from Impossible Project to the current stock, You've probably heard people always chattering about the old days. The beautiful colors and detail of the film emulsion from the original Polaroid company before they went asses up in 2008. Impossible Project had to reformulate the chemistry when they revived the format and essentially had to start over because chemicals used in the past were no longer available, some of them illegal, like GTA 5 stars illegal. It was a huge headache and it took them a long time to get to where they are today. Although the Polaroid film of yesteryear is over a decade in our little rear view mirror, you still see plenty of unopened packs from 2009 or earlier on the old ebay.com. Very famous website, you should check it out. You might be tempted. Maybe you want to try that older film stock. You lust for what might be. But before you smash by, let's talk about the different states of expired film. And to make it easy, let's break them up into categories. First, you have expired film from the Impossible Project era up through today. That film should still develop with mixed results and the batteries should more or less still function. Next, you have film from the late 2000s that was cold stored, meaning it was refrigerated and preserved as best as possible. That film may still develop, in some cases with good results, but the battery could still fail. Next, you have film from the late 2000s that wasn't cold stored. This film could still develop in some way, but it probably won't, and it will definitely have some chemical spread problems, whatever happens. The battery's life is also questionable. And finally, you have film from 2009 back through the rest of Polaroid's history where both the film and the battery are rest in peace, dead as a doornail. Doornails, famously well known for, for how dead they are. Let's start with this murky area of late 2000s film that may or may not give you anything because it's the most common type you'll find on eBay. The last Polaroid film batches ever released had expiration dates of late 2009. Over a period of several years, the chemicals in Polaroid film dries up, it gets funky, and eventually it hardens to death. And I'm, I'm not gonna make a sexual joke about that, about getting so hard you die. I'm not going to. I refuse, I feel I'm better than that, I don't think you guys wanna hear that. Um, so anything you buy from this era of film is a gamble, but late 2009 is your best bet to get something which shows any results. I've made that gamble a few times really out of curiosity, and usually I've either found the whole thing was dead, the film dried up, or it did produce a chemical spread, but only down the center column of the film really, you know, sometimes to the edge with this burnt amber look. And there's definitely something appealing artistically about trying this. And from an archival perspective, it's really cool to capture an image on something as historical as this original film type, knowing we're on the cusp of none of this stuff, you know, ever producing a result again. But you've got to ask yourself if it's really worth the price. These expired packs are at least 15 to 20 bucks a pop, basically the same price as a new box, and your odds of getting anything at all is, uh, it's pretty f***ing low. All right, welcome back to the shoot. We are here at this multiplex shooting with expired Spectra film provided to us by Jesse from At Analog Wisdom. Huge shout out to Jesse for the film. I cannot wait to see if anything comes out or if the batteries work. Let's do this. The thing I am trying to keep in mind when I'm shooting with expired film is to slightly overexpose it because as film ages by a decade, usually the rule of thumb is go one stop of overexposure. And also framing wise, I'm trying to frame right down the center because the spread failures are likely gonna be on the right side of the photo. So let's see what we can get here.
All right, so we did get some results out of this pack, which was honestly kind of surprising to me, especially out of a Spectre that's over 10 years old. Thank you once again to Jesse from at Analog Wisdom for sending this over and for sending over a pack of 600 film. Uh, really cool to get some results out of this chemistry that would have been dried up and gone had we not tried to shoot with this today. And hope you guys picked up some tips and tricks along the way. So I'm gonna send you back to the episode. If you do buy one of these packs, throw it in the camera and nothing happens, it's because the battery is dead. At this point, you may be compelled to throw the entire thing in the garbage and then pout for the rest of the evening, you know, much to the chagrin of your significant other who's really already on the edge with you and this is kind of pushing them over. But before you do that, there is a possibility that the battery is dead, but some of the chemistry still lives in its amber zombie form. The way to try it out and see if the film might still develop and do this in complete darkness Slide the film out of the original pack and then slide it into a newer empty Polaroid cartridge with a functioning battery. Throw a dark slide in there to top it all off. I'd recommend practicing this with already exposed sheets first because once you're in complete darkness, you are just flying blind and the terror is just such a rush. Really, really feels good. Anyway, there's one other interesting possibility with late 2000s film that it may have been cold stored. Polaroid chemicals will always, always eventually dry up, but their best chance of survival is if they've been refrigerated. You're not gonna find too many of these packs that were judiciously stored and then sold over a decade later, but it can happen. Early in 2020, Brooklyn Film Camera acquired a ton of SX-70 Time Zero film from the last batch produced, which had been cold stored in a photography studio for 11 years. They tested a pack and the results were pretty incredible. Due to the rarity of old film in this condition, Market value was 90 bucks a pack. My finger was like hovering over the add to cart button. My wallet was like, Ben, you better not fucking do it. Do not fucking do this, Ben. Do not fucking do this. And then it like sold out within two minutes. So yeah, it's possible, but very rare. And if you do find it, it's gonna be expensive. The other big category of expired film is that modern era good good. Starting in 2010, Impossible Project brought Polaroid film back into the mix. And there's a whole heap of expired stuff from that period up until the current era with Polaroid Originals and now Polaroid. Well, as I record this, there aren't any expired packs of 2020 Polaroid yet, but if you're watching this in 2021, comment down below. If you're watching this in 2022, I hope the, hope the world still exists. Um, please give an update on how the world is doing in the comments. Film from the last 10 years should more or less still produce results, as you can ascertain from all we've discussed here today, the more recent it is, the better it will behave. Expired film from even as late as 2018 will already show some unique color cast, some spread failures and wonky business, but some people are into that kind of thing, so you can get it for a few bucks less than buying new and maybe you wanna try it out, go for it. I mean, whatever floats your boat, I'm not dictating what you should or shouldn't do, I'm just telling you what's what the business is. I just wanna show you a cool thing you can do if you do manage to get a result out of pre-2010 film. I don't advocate digitally manipulating Polaroids, but I was just curious what you could do with this image. And really with just a few adjustments of some RGB curves, it's kind of nuts. You can basically restore the colors of the image. The tones are all still there. You just gotta play around. Anyway, just a fun thing to look at. So. In conclusion, if you love potentially throwing your money directly in the garbage, maybe it's worth buying a few original era packs on eBay. But more than likely, you're gonna wanna stick with the newer stuff. Either way, it's really interesting to see how people experiment and use the ancient scrolls of the past to write new stories. Ugh. Just poetry here, folks, on In An Instant. And thank you for watching In An Instant. Go ahead and cold store that subscribe button after giving it a smash. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, and all things instant. Bye.